Good evening and thanks for watching Fox 31 News at 10. I'm Aaron Leedy. Continuing coverage tonight, the heartbeat bill signed by Governor Brian Kemp won't take effect until 2020. But Fox 31's Daniel Ledbetter is examining the legal consequences associated with the new law. Weeks after the heartbeat bill was signed by Governor Kemp, there are still some unanswered questions surrounding the law. That's according to District Attorney Greg Edwards. He says it's unclear how the law will be enforced. In some instances, we have to have some clarity from the courts, and so that's what I'll be waiting for before I can begin any prosecutions or do anything in relation to any situations about uh, this new law. Edwards anticipates the grounds of the law will be challenged in court before they take effect in 2020. I know the one thing about uh, that was asked about, well, what about women who go to other states and get abortions and come back? Again, all of those things are certainly totally unsettled. Right now, abortions are still legal up until the 20th week of pregnancy. That is until this law takes effect in 2020. Danielle Ledbetter, Fox 31 News. Now, earlier today, hundreds of people held a Stop the Bans rally at the Georgia State Capitol. Many of you sharing your thoughts on this new law. One person saying, quote, I'm so proud of the people in Atlanta who are standing up for women's rights. You guys are making history and giving women across the nation the courage we need. You're doing amazing. Keep up the good fight. Another user says it's a great day for a protest in Atlanta at the Georgia State Capitol. Radical policies of Governor Kemp and others trying to restrict women's rights will not stand. But Governor Kemp is standing firm on the state's abortion bill, even as more actors and directors threaten to boycott Georgia's film industry, which brings in an estimated $3 billion a year to Georgia, mostly thanks to the state's generous tax breaks. Governor Kemp acknowledges that a lot of people are angry over his decision to sign the heartbeat abortion bill into law, but he stands by that decision. They're mad at me for doing what I said I would do, but I think most Georgians appreciate that. Governor Kemp says he still supports those tax incentives and wants Hollywood to keep shooting movies and TV shows here, but he also says he'll stand firm in his support for the new law. The new abortion law goes into effect January 1st. It is expected to face several legal challenges before then. Protesters in Chicago got an early start, voicing opposition to the recent abortion bans in numerous states. Some of the people dressed up as the women who were forced to have children in the book The Handmaid's Tale. Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle was at the event saying abortion rights in the U.S. are being threatened. Alabama's law, which is expected to face legal challenges, virtually makes terminating a pregnancy illegal. Mississippi's law that bans abortions as early as six weeks headed to federal court today. And Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant signed the so-called heartbeat bill in March, but the state's only abortion clinic is taking the bill to court, asking a judge to strike it down. Both the clinic and state attorneys will make their arguments at a U.S. district court. Some experts say Judge Carlton Reeves is likely to issue a preliminary injunction. One pro-choice volunteer believes that would be the right call. Is increasing daily. I can't imagine being a woman of reproductive age right now and having to face the fact that tomorrow, next week, next year, you may not have a choice to control your own body. A number of other states have passed their versions of the heartbeat bill recently, but at least 10 states have laws that specifically protect abortion rights. Well, happy Tuesday, Southwest Georgia. It's another nice and hot day across South Georgia, but we're expecting these temperatures to get even warmer as we head in towards the weekend. Today, we topped off at 94 degrees. We're going to see these temperatures stay 5 to 10 degrees warmer than the average for this time of year. And that record, we're about 7 degrees shy of the record back in 1962. This triple-digit heat will become a reality and certainly will be making some record-breaking temperatures as we finish out the end of May and start off in June. Tonight, a nice night. No rain in the forecast for us. The roadways are dry. It doesn't look like there's a lot of activity right now on Interstate 75 and Cordial at US 280. Uh, temperatures still pretty warm if you're heading outdoors too. 80 degrees for most across this area in our western neighborhood. 78 for Dawson and Morgan. 79 for Newton. Our friends in Mitchell County are uh, to the same for our friends down in Colquitt County as well. Otherwise, temperatures in the 80s. Heading out the door tomorrow, we're almost done with the school year. Some folks already graduated for those cities and counties that are still heading to school in the morning. 72 degrees, plenty of sunshine warming up into the upper 80s by lunchtime. And then as we head into 5 o'clock, 92 degrees. I think we'll top off tomorrow once again around 94, 95 degrees. 
But as we mentioned a little bit earlier, record setting heat is in store for us. No rain in sight and let you know when we may think we may see a few more raindrops. And we're taking a look at the tropics. We're two weeks out before the start of the season and already some activity to talk about. Phoebe hospital physicians are warning about the signs of heat stroke and heat exhaustion. They say you should know the signs and symptoms, especially with temperatures reaching nearly 100 degrees this week. Cold, clammy skin, dehydration, and vomiting are all signs to look out for. You should also avoid exercising outside in the middle of the day or in dark, heavy clothing. Tara Henderson, resident at Phoebe Northwest, says heat exhaustion can turn into something worse. If not treated properly, can lead to heat stroke. The way you would tell the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke is heat stroke, in addition to the symptoms I previously mentioned, um, they would also have like an altered mental status. They'll seem confused. They just won't be like themselves. Henderson says that more severe cases can even lead to death. Phoebe says they see a lot of heat strokes, especially in our area. We have an update tonight. Four teenagers have been charged in connection to a train being shot at last week, according to Albany police. Today, police announced that a 15-year-old admitted to shooting his BB gun at the train, and a 12-year-old admitted to being on the tracks and seeing shots being fired. The 15-year-old has been charged with intruding on railroad tracks and aggravated assault, while the 12-year-old has been charged with intruding on railroad tracks. The BB gun was reported stolen, according to investigators. More arrests are expected. Senate Bill 167 was signed into law earlier this month. The law affects where children in foster care will stay permanently. State Senator Matt Brass, the sponsor of the bill, says the law also gives the Division of Family and Children's Services a timeline to actively search for a foster child's family. Well, now a family member has six months to come forward. According to Brass, the law also gives judges more leeway in deciding a long-term plan for foster children to basically tell the judges that they don't always have to send that child with the family member. It's not always in the best interest of that child. Before, if a foster child's family member came forward, the child would most likely end up with that family member. The search for a missing four-year-old girl in Texas has entered its third week. Malia Davis went missing back on May 5th. Protesters demonstrated outside of Child Protective Services offices in Houston to demand accountability in the girl's case. They want to know why officials placed Malia back into the care of her mother. Robert Arnold reports. We won't stop until justice is served. For parents against predators, justice doesn't stop with the person responsible for four-year-old Malia's disappearance. We want everybody that's responsible held accountable. Everybody, CPS, the judge, the mom, stepdad, dad, everybody. This small group of protesters stood in front of CPS's offices as a visual reminder of a desire expressed worldwide to hear why the agency and the judge presiding over the case decided to place Malia back with her mother after allegations of child abuse were raised. CPS made the wrong decision. Her mom made the wrong decision. The idiot made the wrong decision of watching her. Nobody cares. Why? Malia Davis was reported missing on May 5th by a man police describe as her stepfather. Police say Darian Vence initially told officers the little girl was kidnapped. He was later arrested and charged with tampering with evidence after blood evidence linked the little girl to his apartment. Malia's mother says she ended her relationship with Vence, but still left her child in his care when she took an out-of-town trip. Despite multiple searches, Malia remains missing. This little girl had a life. She had a heart beating. Where is she? And CPS officials say they aren't at liberty to provide additional details because there's a gag order in place. The Florida man was sentenced today to life in prison for his wife's murder. Michael Heim has maintained his innocence since his 23-year-old wife, Bonnie, disappeared back in 1993. Well, he said that she left their home after an argument. The couple's son, Aaron Fraser, was three years old when she went missing. He told a child welfare worker at the time that, quote, daddy shot mommy and daddy could not wake her up. Two decades later, Fraser moved back into his childhood home after suing his father for wrongful death. In 2014, Fraser found his mother's skull and other remains buried in the home's backyard. And last month, a jury found his father guilty. We kept saying we wanted justice. For 26 years, we wanted justice. And now we have it. And we're like, it doesn't feel like we thought it was supposed to feel like. We didn't know what it was supposed to feel like. Um, we got justice, but we don't have money. So we're just going to um, 
take it one day at a time and learn what it feels like not to not to have to keep searching anymore the medical examiner didn't determine exactly how she was killed, but prosecutors have argued that Heim shot her and then buried her. A new approach, how a newly appointed Board of Education member plans to tackle school bullying in Georgia. Plus. The government watchdog says tens of billions of dollars of your tax money is being wasted. The close to 400 steps that need to be taken to make sure that money is not being thrown away.